This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Furries. <laughs> the reason that furries exist now is that movie. Let's just say I wound up with a few claw marks and was done. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a really intimate secret. It's an old-timey family fun event. IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Well, you know, Mike, last Monday I got up and I did get down with the sickness. Oh, uh, bum, yeah. I can hear a little bit of it in your voice. Yeah, this morning when I woke up, I thought for sure I wasn't going to have any voice to record anything. Yeah. So I was terrified. I was so glad that I had... I was already caught up on my other recording stuff, and I didn't have to worry about that immediately. But then I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do about the show? Yeah. I I just turned up your mic a little bit, so we'll try to let the technology help you out a little. And then, um, you know Throat Coat T. Oh, yeah. We also have Throat Coat Lozenges. Which I'm so excited about, because that T... So this is the first time I've ever used it sick, since uh-huh. you're the one who introduced me to it, obviously. Yeah. And um, it's amazing, and it tastes good, which is nice. It's all right. Yeah. Anyway, these lozenges are by the same people, Traditional Medicinals. Okay. Uh, and it's new. These are new. Got mm-hmm. them at Winco. Oh, quick Winco update, too, by the way. They're no longer hiding the mint Brussels from you. They are to the right in the aisle that you come in on. This is the one on Woodruff and Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. And... They have these little half, I was kind of given some, throwing out some Milano hate, but they have these little half Milano slices with dark chocolate and peppermint on them that are, I wouldn't say they're as good as the mint Brussels, but they're- They're pretty dang good. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. All yeah, right. And also, uh, they don't have any of the I Love Winco t-shirts that you mentioned. No. So Jess, I'll try to find some other way to hook you up for Christmas. But yeah, I asked all around as they were stocking the night before Thanksgiving. Right. And the right. guy looks at me like, Are you are you playing? Like, dude, we <laughs> oh, haven't no, had I'm those serious. in so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so he did direct me to the I guess each cash register has some I Love Win Co. <laughs> stickers. Mm-hmm. We got some of those. Oh, and another thing I'm excited about, you know, the old farmer's almanac. Oh yeah, your favorite thing. Yeah, we get the winter predictions. It comes out around it comes out every August or so. Mm-hmm. We're down now to where we have the Idaho weather Christmas predictions. Are you ready? Oh yeah. This is for zone six, northwest Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Unsettled weather improves slowly for the Christmas holiday. Improves for Christmas? Yeah. It's going the wrong direction. Well, I, I need it to be wintry and white. I bet we'll already, I bet that unsettled weather will dump some snow. I hope so. Yeah. There you go. Okay. You're right. And then it'll be clear enough that your family can actually come see you for they Christmas. They can drive to you. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. And if you're driving to Utah or they're coming to you, this is zone seven for Southwest California, Nevada, or as uh, some people would say, Nevada, <laughs> Utah, Arizona. A very white Christmas for Utah with a very white Christmas. Oh, really? Well, I mean, it's already very white in Utah. It really is. (laughs) Yeah. It's always a white Christmas in Utah. With heavy snow forecast, Arizona looks stormy, but may clear in time for opening presents. Oh, nice. So if you're flying... Really? Okay. Stormy. Okay. I mean, I guess they would get rain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. But if it's a very white Christmas in Utah... Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume we're going to have a very white Christmas here because we're always 10 to 15 degrees colder than Salt Lake. The one thing, though, that I wasn't really expecting with this new job that has sort of been a challenge is that there's a lot less to do during the winter. Right. And so usually you have like events that you can take clients to and like there are festivals and fairs and stuff. Parks. Parks even. And now, as a matter of fact, I had to meet a client in a park today and I was so cold. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it was her and her two kids. They were playing on the playground equipment and even the kids were like, mom, it's cold. Can I sit in the car? I was like, yeah, mom, can we sit in the car? Yeah. I don't understand people that go to outdoor events in the winter and their cheeks are nice and rosy. But they're not comfy cozy. They, if they're anything like me, when I'm there, they're freezing their assets <laughs> off and they're pretending to have a good time. I don't get it. Well, if you know how to dress properly. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they are. They probably have long underwear on. They got climb or something. I don't know. You know what? I actually saw some long underwear on Amazon that are heated oh. and I'm probably going to get some. <laughs> Battery powered? I think they're rechargeable. Oh, nice. Okay, so they come with a little uh, 
built-in batteries somewhere, maybe in the waistband or yeah. something. And then it looks like maybe the Batman utility belt, and you can just turn it on. Right. Oh, that's hot. I Literally. Can you turn it on by zones? Can you like... Uh, well, I think that they're two separate ones. So you have one in like the top and one in the bottom. <laughs> oh, wow. You know? Uh, but I think Do they have socks in them? Uh, no, those they ones don't. They don't have feet? No. Oh. But I mean, they probably are assuming that you're going to wear boots. Yeah. Yeah. But that is a great gift for that one friend that's always cold. Yeah. Oh, speaking of your cold uh-huh. and Winco and meth... I uh, I guess meth. Um, I don't have a copy of the Anar- Anarchist's Cookbook anywhere. Uh, maybe I should download it off the internet. Don't do that, kids. <laughs> you would never want to do that. But um, especially not while using a VPN. <laughs> um, I you had specifically asked for Mucinex, so yes. I put some of that in my cart. Went to self checkout. All of a sudden, I ha- I needed assistance for some reason. Mm-hmm. The, it stopped. Hold everything. Sirens went off. <laughs> security officers surrounded I'm kidding. But yeah, um that's a controlled substance. Oh, Mucinex. Okay. Well, and I think it's specifically the DM one that you got me. That's the one. Yeah, the regular one I don't think is, All but right. that one is. One follow up then we'll get straight to the comments. Yeah, I love it. The follow up just about my viral video. <laughs> you remember last time we talked about it it was 2.8 million. It went to 8 million. Yeah, it's it's kind of simmered down, uh-huh. but now I see. So I posted it first on Instagram, but I share those, but I I allow sharing of the reels to Facebook because mm-hmm. it's all meta anyway. Right. And now I see the Facebook views starting to climb, so maybe it'll get a second life. But again, knowing that it had nothing to do with me personally, mm-hmm. it was a video that I found that I saw, uh, downloaded it, a good you know click that's cool, held on to for two months. Then posted, mm-hmm. then it got eight million views. Funny, but but just to witness it in real time, like twelve hundred new followers too. Jeez Louise! And so I, and this is on my Mike Helps Idaho Instagram. So imagine how disappointed they're going to be when I start <laughs> posting things about Idaho real estate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I post the it, the video was dominoes. If you didn't catch last episode, um, it was just some dominoes falling in a unique way. And I post what I think is cool stuff like that all the time. So maybe, maybe they'll stick around. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I really do think that even though it is slowing down, I think you're going to hit 10 mil. It could happen. Yeah. Remember, okay, remember last episode, you were you were saying, hey, it, it might get to 5 mil. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, simmer down there, speed racer. Right. And it did. It did. <laughs> it six, seven, eight. Yeah. All right. Kind of cool. That's not even a hum- humble brag. I know. I have nothing to do with it. It's not <laughs> to my credit. At all. Right. Anybody can do that. Anybody can steal content from the internet and post it going, hey, this is cool. Look at this. Three comments. Dane on YouTube says, you know, they don't even have Condor Man on Disney Plus. Really? And then he said, but I'm super special because I have a DVD copy that was burned from Laserdisc, which is crazy. That's cool. Because so do I. Okay. Yeah. That's hilarious. It was given to my it was given to me by a friend decades ago huh. who, I don't know, found like a Malaysian website that did that sort of thing. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Funny. Now I do I do want to say I own it on YouTube. You can find mm-hmm. it on YouTube for like three ninety nine to buy. Oh hot. Okay. All right. So but if our words have any meaning, if the if Disney is reviewing hundreds of thousands of transcripts of shows, internet mm-hmm. talk shows, podcasts. Uh, I will say, Disney, please remake Condor Man again. Yeah, come and on. if you want to do it with a black woman as part hey. of the Pandaverse, sure, you can do that too. I don't care. Just remake it. I mean, I think that's a fun little take. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Have you heard, though, there's been a little, um, especially with the South Park Pandaverse episode, there's been uh-huh. a little backlash and a little making fun of Disney uh-huh. for just being so woke. Or whatever you want to call it. That's the thing. They're not that woke. Well, they have an olive-skinned Snow White. Right. And and I guess she's been kind of sassy about things. Like, mm-hmm. get used to it or whatever. Right. You know, yeah. fairly progressive. And Well, but to be fair, she's probably re- like received death threats for it. So Probably. Honestly, I can't really blame her <laughs> for getting sassy. I probably would too. <laughs> Simmer down, people. <laughs> we got worse things to worry about. Um, mm-hmm. more muff, more buff. Won't let it go. He, he asked again on YouTube, uh, our buddy in Rhode Island, 
Um, he asked again on YouTube. All right, Mike, tell your jail story. So if we have to, either this episode or next, I will tell the story of how I was thrown in jail. Fourth uh, of July weekend. Maybe you should wait for our Christmas episode so that he gets to. It's like a little <laughs> Christmas gift just for more muff, more buff. He's added a sense of urgency to it, like he really <laughs> wants to hear it. I told him it's a lame story. He says, "No, dude, no story <laughs> that ends with." And then I went to jail. <laughs> Is lame. That's true. I've done some pretty crazy stuff and I've never gone to jail. You're going to be surprised, buddy. <laughs> it's lame. I'm telling you. <laughs> Whitney is our very first ever emailer. Which I'm so excited about, by the way. Yeah. So Whitney knows how to go to the internet and type in IFAF pod and find our website, mm-hmm. IFAFpod.com and click the contact link at the bottom. And if you don't want to go through the hassle of finding our website, it's just info at IFAFpod.com. That's right. She gave me some good-natured ribbing. I guess she's been a long-time listener, if you can say that around about a show that's been around for less than six months. But uh, she's like, that's the second Cheryl Teagues reference you've made on the show. Maybe Mike needs a Cheryl Teagues poster behind him. I think that's cute. I responded, ha-ha. <laughs> and I said, hey, by the way, you know, thanks for listening. And uh, you may be a fan of ours. We're a fan of yours. Right. It's so cool to have these firsts. And you're the first emailer to the show, Whitney. It was so sweet. I read it too. And it it really made me smile. It was just the nicest. I guess her husband has Virgin River land and cattle. Uh Uh-huh. And so whenever the Spud Kings, that's our hot new hockey team. Yeah. Whenever they score a hat trick, because that's a thing in hockey, right? Three goals in a row. Yeah. It's three something in a row. I know sports real good. (laughs) That's definitely what that is. (laughs) Virgin River donates $500 to the Snake River Animal Shelter. How cool is that? Well, that that just makes me so happy. Yeah. Man, we're- That's really cool. We're building our tribe. We're surrounded by amazing people. And I just, that does, it gives me chills. Well, now we're going to have to look into that company because they sound really baller and cool. We haven't been to a Spud Kings game yet. And- uh, Honestly, oh. I would go. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would go. go. All right. Okay, hockey is kind. If you've got to go to a sport, that's the one to go see. You know what? You got a point there. Yeah, especially yeah. because you might get a bonus sport out of it, aka boxing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like you could get WWE and hockey all in one night. <laughs> well, and to the point where I don't know if you know this, but they actually have created a sort of buddy system in hockey. Where if a fight does break out on the ice, all of the other players have to go find a player of the opposite team and basically side hug them <laughs> so that they don't fight. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, thank you, Whitney. Thank you, Whitney's husband. Thank you, Idaho Land and Cattle Company. And you are IFAF this week. Whoosh, virtual high five, 21 finger gun salute. Thank you. Chef's kiss to you. And thank you for all you're doing. Let's get to the... Uh, News from last week. Let's get to the other half of the news from last week. Because, Carl, I am just sorely disappointed in our local news. Oh. There was the article right before we did the show last time. Mm -hmm. So episode 20. There was a story that came out about INL workers being hacked. Right. And we had the bare bones minimum details. Mm -hmm. Come to find out there's a little more to the story. Yeah. Okay. And can I point out? So we were talking to uh, some of our friends about this, and one of my closest friends, who I see literally daily, turns to me and she's like, oh yeah, I already knew about that. And you didn't tell me? You didn't think that me, some, like you didn't think that Mike and I, two people who run a podcast about Idaho Falls, <laughs> would care about that information? <laughs> Like, she had it, like, before Thanksgiving. It's going to take a while, but I predict that we will train everybody in our friends and family groups to be our reporters and our eyes and ears. To be our little birds. For this show, yeah. Yeah. So we'll just come out with it. As you probably know now, the INL was hacked by gay furry hackers. Who want cat girls. Who want the INL to make them cat girls. (laughs) Now, if you're... Okay, wait. I guess I just realized maybe I don't understand that sentence fully. Do they want the INL to make them, the gay furry hackers, into cat girls? <laughs> or do they want to create a being known as cat girls for the gay furry hackers? And if so, does that mean that the gay furry hackers are lesbians? That's right. Yeah, that's anything, what that would mean. <laughs> yeah. Because if so, feminism. 
I think I think we're missing the broader point, which is this is trolling on an epic level. Yeah. And an illegal level. Oh, very. And we're not condoning that at all. In fact, let's face it, it's pretty shitty to release names and numbers and other private data about people who are just trying to do their job. Right. Especially because realistically, dude, the INL is a huge employer around here. And they're one of the best paying ones. Yeah. So, I mean, realistically, you can't really fault people for just going to the best paying employer in their area. Here's the thing, though. Even though it's a dick move, the organizations, and depending on where you look, they need to work on their branding a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, It's either Siege Sec, Siege as in the siege on a city, like the siege of Syracuse at the end of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yes. uh (laughs) Uh-huh. With Archimedes and the Mm -hmm. mirrors and the... Claws that come out. Uh, I'm very excited about sieges. How long has it been since you've thought about the Roman Empire? Okay. Um, and sec, like, give me a sec. So or it's either siege, sec, or sieged sec, like oh. past tense. Anyway, they uh, they build themselves as gay furry hackers. Hilarious. And, and they've done, here's the thing. They're trolls that do this basically to red states. Right. You know, because then they, they're advocate. I mean, to, to paint it nicely, they're advocates for social change. Mm-hmm. To paint it not nicely, they are kind of criminals. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, what they're doing is illegal and you can't yeah. overlook that. Right. And also, I've known many gay furry hackers and not all of them do illegal stuff. There are plenty of good gay furry hackers on both sides. Now, I originally thought... <laughs> I thought it was a funny joke, but okay. <laughs> I got it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I originally thought that maybe local news didn't say who it was, who did it, because that they, they were trying to protect our little virgin ears. Right. But then I thought, wait a minute. The news is for who? Adults. Right. And adults can handle talking about homosexuality Mm -hmm. and furries, Mm -hmm. that little subculture there. Yeah. And and hackers. Yeah. I think. Well, you know what? Some adults can't. I think. Some people are just very sensitive, (laughs) you know? Right. But the news is a one-way conduit of information from them to us. Right. And when you have a one-way conduit of information where I can't uh, ask follow-up questions, you have to make sure you answer... Here it comes again, kids. The five W's. Who, what, Mm -hmm. when, where, why. Sometimes, if you're feeling saucy, how, how often, to what extent. By not including the part of the story about gay furry hackers, we've omitted who Mm -hmm. and probably the why. At least a big part of the why. A big part of the why. Right. So when the news omits two out of the five W's, Mm -hmm. they're not really the news, now are they? And to be fair... I do think that there is some argument as to why not to do that. Yes. Because really, by doing that, you're giving them what they want. Exactly. But then every other news agency in the world, because this was a global story, did say it. So if you know the information is going to be available somewhere else, why would you make somebody go look for it? Well, to be fair, people are lazy. (laughs) And at least, I mean, at least you're keeping your conscious, your conscience clear. Sure. I get that. But I I got the distinct impression that the news was trying to shelter us somehow. And that's Mm. the last thing I want from the news. Right. Right. I want to know all about Ukraine and Gaza, even if it doesn't affect me here in my own little bubble. Mm -hmm. You got to tell me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. So, kids, here we go. We're going to break down the three-word phrase, gay furry hackers. Let's start with gay. All right. I love it. Carl, can I tackle this one? Sure. Sure. Yeah, you you can take the softball. You got it. (laughs) Gay is a diamond-studded rainbow. Gay is when a man and a man, what's the gayest thing I can think of? Love each other very much. Love each other so much that they go shopping for furniture covers together. (laughs) (laughs) A gay would never put a furniture cover on their couch. They would just buy a really nice couch. (laughs) Yeah, that's probably. How dare you? And they'd get a hypoallergenic dog to go on it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> That's, that is super gay. <laughs> or when a woman and a woman, you know, go duck hunting together. In their Subaru. <laughs> yeah. With their Great Dane. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been a convention once in Jackson <laughs> Hall. Every single girl that I saw there that day like looked like Melissa Etheridge. 
<laughs> sun bleached skin and freckles, uh-huh. long blonde, straight hair to the shoulders. Uh-huh. I mean, Were they was, also wearing flannel? Yes, and <laughs> jeans. Oh yeah, it was a vibe. Yeah, I was. I didn't get the memo. I didn't get invited. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> yeah. Also, Furries. just to be clear, kids, this is us being funny and stereotyping <laughs> for the sake of comedic humor, not yeah. because we do not appreciate and accept and are not allies to the gays. Absolutely. The thing is, I don't believe these hackers are gay or furry. Some of them might be one or the other or right. both, but yeah. I don't think they all are. They're trying to think of the scariest thing uh, for a red state dweller. Right. You know? Well, and honestly, if I told my grandma this story, I think it would freak her out a little. <laughs> they ought to be gay, trans. They should th- They should throw trans in there. That's a big... Oh, there we go. You know, some people will get... A- I'm just trying to think of words these days that are so hot that... Ooh, yeah. People get offended just by you saying them. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. talking about them. Not. It doesn't matter what you have to say. No, you're so right, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, anyway, the next word, furry. Can I tackle this one, Mike? You want to tackle furry? I do, actually. Great. Yeah. So furries are a subculture uh, that likes to dress up or at least um, partake as an identity in like fursonas, which are basically uh, humanized animals. They wear fursuits and have fursonas. They don't technically have to wear suits um, and they don't technically have to wear a fursona. You can just identify as a furry if you like wish you were a furry basically but generally yeah, fur- yeah because uh, yeah, genders don't matter that's... anymore yeah yeah <laughs> and so uh, now and so the people that said what's next right uh, are we going <laughs> to fall in love with cats yeah yep <laughs> but no i actually are we going to put kitty litters boxes in schools because kids think they're cats and also can i just say From the dawn of having cats as pets, (laughs) there have been kids who at recess will pretend to be cats. I was one of them. I was indeed a cat girl. (laughs) Not Uh, in the cool, fun sense, but in the nerdy, (laughs) didn't have very many friends sense. (laughs) I had one date with a woman once when I was many, many years younger, and um, she was cat-like. Like, she made meows and... Held her paws up like this, and that was way, but this was in the 90s. Wow, she was really ahead of the curve. I, yep. Okay. She yeah. was like the proto-cat girl. And I, <laughs> maybe I'd be into it now, but back then I was like, this is not, I don't <laughs> want, what do you think? Well, I think it's because. clutching my pearls. I think it's because you don't want to date a cat. Let's just say I wound up with a few claw marks and was done, so. <laughs> <laughs> but back to personas. You you were saying <laughs> Don't you're gonna upset your Do you wanna make you more throat cut? Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest thing I think you've ever said <laughs> the entire time I've known you. We're It was, we're, it was wild, man. I I've had Literally wild. Yeah. Although I guess cats are domesticated. <laughs> she wasn't. <laughs> She was an Egyptian Mao. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to talk about this in depth later. <laughs> anyway. Um, well, I was hoping we could just skip past it. <laughs> but. But I've actually known a few furries. And they're all, they've are all they always been great people. I've always really liked them. Uh, the one that I knew did actually have a fursuit. And a lot of them. Okay. It takes a lot of craftsmanship to make a fursuit. First off. I don't know if you've ever bought faux fur. It is expensive as hell. Really? It is so pricey. It's like 20 bucks a yard, if not more. Well, like the cheap stuff is 20 bucks a yard. The good stuff, like the really good faux fur, you're looking at like up to 40 or 50 bucks a yard. So like any cosplay hobby, uh, Mm -hmm. the more money you have, the more you can rock it. Yeah, basically. But man, and on top of that too, you have to be pretty crafty in general because like you're basically building a three-dimensional Disney character. You can't get this from Fursuits R Us or... I mean, you you actually can buy custom fursuits online. Asking for a friend. (laughs) Yeah, for your cat girl. (laughs) (laughs) No. I'm sure she'd love it. Oh, Merry (laughs) Christmas to Mike's cat girl. That was three lifetimes ago. Yeah, that's, well, if she's a cat, definitely. (laughs) Yeah, she's She's, long gone. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we're on Fluffy 3. (laughs) (laughs) Zing! Oh my god. Oh my god. Babe.
I don't even remember where we were. Uh, but yeah, the craftsmanship in a fursuit oh, right. is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, I would be interested in making one just to see if I could. Like, if I had infinite money and infinite time, I would make one just for fun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people... Could you make me Sully from... Uh, is that his name? From Monsters, Inc.? Oh, probably. Wait, what's his name? Sully. Yeah, yeah. Sully. I could make you Sully. I'll be the Mike to your Sully. Yeah. Although, yeah. wouldn't it be more appropriate <laughs> for you to be Mike? That's true. <laughs> We'd always have something in front of me. Yeah. You know, like a, Yeah, there you like go. That. Yeah. <laughs> you know, though... The original furry, the Disney Robin Hood. Oh, yeah, the fox. I'm just saying, the reason that furries exist now is that movie. Wooda lala gala 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 wooda day or whatever. I'm just saying, when I was a little girl, I thought he was cute. Really? Oh, come on. Oh, you know what? I come to think of it, Maid Marian was a hottie too. Right. Yeah. I mean, I feel weird and dirty saying it because it's like, he's a fox. But like, <laughs> he's an animated fox. He's an anthropomorphized fox. So it's fine. This is this is exactly like the Wayne's World conversation. <laughs> Do you ever think Bugs Bunny is cute when he dresses up as a girl's bunny? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That would make me Wayne. Damn it. Who's, who's the <laughs> bunny I'd be, in Space I'd be Jam? Because I see her all the time. Lola. Lola. Yeah. Everybody's got the hots for Lola. She got that booty. Yeah. Yeah. I feel kind of <laughs> bad. Because like, you know, there's some little girl who just saw her in that and wanted, like, she thought she was cool. Because I remember when I saw Space Jam and I saw Lola Bunny for the first time and I was like, yes, female icon, you know? And like, if I would have Googled like oh. Lola Bunny <laughs> picture so that I could color one and it was just her bodacious boobies and her bunny booty, I'd be very upset. Can I ask my grandma question? Yeah. Now, is that are furries like bronies? Technically, there can be some overlap, but really, a brony is just a male fan of the My Little Pony series, specifically the reboot from two thousand seven. Okay, two thousand. I don't remember the year exactly, uh, but yeah, the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic one. So some furries can be bronies, some bronies can be furries, mm-hmm. um, but not all furries are bronies and vice versa. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. What about furbies? Uh, <laughs> furbies different. are eldritch beings. <laughs> okay, <laughs> That's right. what those are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, one thing I want to clear up, furries are not inherently sexual. Okay. And that was my next question was, is it a sex thing? So my very first introduction to furries was when I was in like probably sixth grade, something like that. I had stayed home, I had stayed home sick for the day and I was watching CSI and they did an episode where a furry got murdered during a furry con party thing. Oh no. And they were like going a down. A furder? A furder. <laughs> it's a furder. Yeah. Furder she wrote. <clears throat> but yeah, and they were talking about like yiffing and fursuits and like their fursonas and stuff. And they were doing it like it was so diabolical, like this disgusting sex stuff. First off, most of them are really just like normal people who are just playing pretend and dressing up and who are like they're they're doing it so innocently. Yeah. Like there's no sexual component to it all, at all. They just really identify with this animal and- like to emulate it. And there are some. <laughs> there are some who do. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Yeah. But the vast majority of furries are doing it pretty innocently. Like, it, it's just a character that they're kind of dressing up as. So it's cosplay. Yeah. It's okay. just cosplay of an original character that they made up. All right. That being said, sometimes there are not appropriate places to wear your fur suits or your tails and ears and... Maybe you should try to pick up on the social cues by looking around and seeing how many other people are wearing those things. And if no one else is wearing those, maybe you should question whether or not it's appropriate for you to be wearing those. But isn't it, and I'm just asking, isn't it kind of half the fun to buck society's conventions and stand out in a crowd? Sure, yeah. You're right. It is half the fun. And you have to accept that some people are going to cringe at it. The some only... people will just yuck your yum and there's nothing you can do about it, kid. Right. What was that con that we had here in Idaho Falls? Oh, Retro Expo. Retro Expo. I mm-hmm. saw a bunch of furries. Yeah. What about one trend I'm seeing a lot more, and maybe it's because it's just this uh-huh. and it's not a whole fursuit, are the little ears. Are those, are those animal ears or are those like elven ears? And I'm getting them confused. 
It depends because Elven ears have actually made a comeback lately and I have been seeing a lot of people wearing those, but those are pretty easy to identify. They'll always sit right on the top of your ear. Now, if they're sitting on the top of your head, those are going to be animal ears. Okay. The, yeah. The usually, ones I'm seeing look like ear caps. Okay. Yeah. Those are just supposed to be elven ears. And apparently like they're allowed at work at some places because I've yeah. seen, you know, I don't, my friend group does not include anyone with elven ears. So, but I'll see them like, you know, at the fast food place. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they're really just like excessive earrings. And then hackers are hackers. There, we broke it down for you. Mm -hmm. Because the local news won't. You're welcome. (laughs) Doing the Lord's work over here. (laughs) Talking about gay furry hackers. Giving everyone a crash course in furries. From someone who's not a furry, by the way. I know... I, I think I know a decent amount, but also if you are a furry, please correct me. I'm always, I'm always interested to learn. And if you're still anti-gay furry hackers, hackers who want the world full of cat girls, I completely feel you on that because I've been there and it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One thing that we promised like two episodes ago that we have to get to this time is my list of what to get the man who has everything. Yes. So as a guy who's been asked that question in his life a few times, I've got five things you can get the person in your life who has everything. Guy, girl, doesn't matter. Mm. Number one, get him something to keep it in. So what has he got a lot of? A bunch of power tools and stuff? A bunch of sockets? You know, just a 10 millimeter socket drawer? Anything that's going to help him organize what he's got. Kind of like when Jim buys Dwight that little acrylic case for his Dwight bobblehead. Yeah. If he collects collectibles, a display case would be great. Mm -hmm. You know, Legos, Star Wars stuff, whatever. A bully barn for all his outdoor stuff, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, a a terabyte or what are they up to now? Two or three or five terabyte backup hard drive. Wild, by the way. If what he cares (laughs) about is his data. Mm -hmm. Number two, get him something to maintain it. Does he have a brand new car or truck? Get him car wash passes. This there is now like last uh, gift guide episode. We were talking about Johnston and Murphy shoes from Farrell's Clothing in Idaho Falls and how they're kind of super spendy, but shoe polish ain't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's black, there's brown, there's dark brown. Get him some batteries if he's got, you know, gadgets. Get him charging cables that can go to multiple devices, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Number three, get him something to complement his favorite thing. Oftentimes, when you buy something, there's all these little accessories that go with it. You know, you buy a brand new phone, you can get the new AirPods or whatever that come with it. Mm-hmm. And the, the, a case. I mean, maybe they're like my dad and they just want one of those big bulky otter boxes that have those special yeah. clips so you can clip it to your belt like you're Batman. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even those otter boxes can run into money now too. Oh, I know. I but, know. But are you going to spend 100 bucks or 200 bucks to protect a $1,200 device? You betcha. Right, right. Yeah. I think it's a fair trade. And, you know, accessories for the car, computer, gaming system, phone, boat, grill, shop, office, all that stuff. Gun. Ammo is always a good gift. Yeah. Number four, get them an experience. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of fun things you can do, you know, that you can even pretend to do. Like there's these discovery flights. I got one of those one year where you go up in a plane and eventually the pilot looks and goes, okay, we're safe. Now you fly it. And you get to go, whoa, whoa, up, (gasps) down, pitch, yaw, roll. It's, It's a lot of fun. That sounds really fun. Or snowboarding, whitewater rafting. Scuba diving, indoor go-karts, paintball, tickets to his favorite event, a weekend away. He'll appreciate the experience. And fifth and finally on my list of what to get the person who has everything, pay for something he already does or she already does. A man's got to eat. Mm-hmm. You know, what's her, what's her favorite restaurant? What's his favorite restaurant? Pay for their gym membership or Disney+. Plus. Honestly, if I got a big old gas card for Christmas, I'd be a happy camper. Maybe he wants an Apple Music subscription. <laughs> You know, a magazine subscription, gym membership. Uh, Does he have to pay for parking meters? You know, Mm -hmm. get him a $100 Visa gift card he can use in one of those things. Right. Honestly, I miss my Spotify so bad. Like, that's a great gift. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, when you pay for something they already do, they get more money to go and buy the stuff that they buy, creating the endless circle of, well, they already have everything that they have. (laughs) There you go. Happy shopping. All right. The next thing we have may not be for you, 
but it may be for somebody you know and love. It's the Christmas Box Angel Vigil. It happens in Idaho Falls every World Children's Day. That's December 6th. Every year, no matter what day of the week it's on, it's at the Christmas Box Angel Monument at Fielding Memorial Cemetery in Idaho Falls. That's the one heading south out of town on Yellowstone before you hit Town and Country Gardens. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a tough one to talk about because it's basically children who have passed away. Linda Hale so pleasantly calls it a club that nobody really wants to belong to. Now, Linda Hale and Terry Hale, you may have heard me refer to them in past episodes, are just great people. I've known their daughter, Tammy, since I was in a musical with her. Uh, we just became friends, stayed in touch. And then when they got this going, I was on the radio and they, they asked me to talk about it. I said, sure thing. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason it's so important is... Have you ever heard the expression, grief is just love with nowhere to go? Oh. Yeah. So if you've lost a child, being around other people who have been there too is, I won't even say oddly comforting. It's very comforting. Yeah. So we're not set up for guests on this show yet. We hope to be someday. But instead of having Terry and Linda Hale on the show, I thought I'd play back a little video that we did together a couple of years ago, because they tell it so much better than I could. Hi, it's Mike Nelson. Maybe you're familiar with the story of The Christmas Box by Richard Paul Evans. In the story, a woman loses a child, and she prays at a statue that's described in the book. And you can see sort of a replica behind us. I'm with Terry and Linda Hale. Thanks for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you. And there's a very special, we want to talk about the statue. We also want to talk about a very special vigil. It's always on December 6th throughout the world. That's Children's Day, and it happens to be the day that we uh, come together at, as people who have lost children, children of any age, and we have a candlelight vigil, and we meet together as a group because we all share that common thing that we've lost somebody and it becomes a very cathartic very healing situation when you're meeting with somebody that you know has been through the same thing you have and understands exactly how you feel right you sort of feel a little comfort when you see other people that have been through that kind of grief well Absolutely. you do of course you know nothing ever takes the pain away totally but uh, to have that uh, balm to heal you for just that moment is very nice, very nice. What should we bring to the vigil? Bring um, yourself and a warm coat <laughs> and gloves. Bring a candle and a flower. It's a candlelight vigil and so that's, that's always nice. But we like to lay a flower at the base of the statue at the conclusion of our ceremony and as a person lays that flower on the on the base of the statue, they say the name of the person that they've lost. That is, to me, the most touching part of the entire ceremony. It's amazing. To know that a child has not been forgotten. I attended one year. I have not lost a child, but my parents did. I mm -hmm. lost a sister, and um, my eyes weren't dry the whole time. But it was, it was very healing, and I think you used the word cathartic? I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good word. It's a good word. <laughs> Great word. And I have some footage from last year. Wow, there was a full moon or almost a full moon. And you'll see they uh, they open it up and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It is so beautiful to see a community of people who uniquely understand loss. It's been said that a person dies three times once when they physically their body takes the last breath once when they're placed in the ground uh, at a ceremony and once again when their name is never said again we're not going to let that happen are we tonight or as long as we live that that name is never said again so at this time and this is my favorite part of the, of the vigil we are going to invite you to come up one at a time Place a flower at the base of the statue and tell us the name of your of your lost child. Stephen and Emma. And look at these people laying flowers at the base of the statue. Every flower or, or group of flowers 
represents a child who passed away. So that's tough to think about. And it's that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Gosh. And then the choir sings, it's really moving. So if you've experienced the loss of a child or know somebody, love somebody who has, please tell them about this. We try to get the word out as best we can every year. 6 p.m. December 6th at Fielding Memorial Cemetery in Idaho Falls and dress warm. It is cold. Bring some of your uh, electrified uh, <laughs> long johns or whatever yeah. you got. Electric long underwear. <laughs> yeah. Mm. There's been some nice years, but uh, they've got a fire going too. And people are staying warm. You'll be warm in your heart after this, I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. Or you'll be crying the whole time. Yeah, your face is going to be sopping wet with tears. It'll probably ice over. I, I don't know when I turned into an emotional pile of mush. I think it was after my first divorce. <laughs> I, I actually... Yeah, you know, that's about when I did too. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I got feelings. I don't want to be the show where we talk about things that are uncomfortable to talk about. But it feels so good once you do, right? Right. Once you do talk about, I don't know, whether it's trans kids or Brian Koberger or... Gay furry hackers. Gay furry hackers. It just feels kind of good to let it out. It's nice to face some of the harder things. You got to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, your other choice is to bury your head in the sand, and no way you're doing that. Right. No way anybody's doing that these days. On to some big news about smart people who aren't gay furry hackers. Okay. This is one Victoria Gijev from Hillcrest High School. She's an 11th grader. Okay. Idaho Congressman Mike Simpson announced that she's the winner of the 2023 Congressional App Challenge for Idaho's 2nd Congressional District, which narrows it down a little bit, but still pretty big. Yeah. So she created this app called Aquapulse. It's a Uh water-level analytics app that enables professionals and the public to gain valuable insights from water system data. What? Wow. Okay. (laughs) You could say that Victoria is victorious. Yes, you could. (laughs) If you made dad jokes for a living. (laughs) Well, not for a living yet. Yeah, not yet. yet. (laughs) Is that a threat or a promise? (laughs) Both. Do you miss the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market already? Oh, so much already. But, you know, it's nice having those Branch and Vine guys in the mall, at least. Yeah. Yeah. We mentioned them in our, you you picked, let's plug this, you picked 13 local places to shop mm-hmm. for the IFAF Shop Local Gift Guide. Mm-hmm. Local Idaho Falls entrepreneurs. If you miss the farmer's market, though, good news. They're going to have kind of a one-off in the middle of winter. Who knows? Maybe they'll do this in January, too. Right? Yeah, I knew you'd be excited about this. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Oh, my gosh. All right. It's happening at the deck. That's the DEC. I love the deck. The downtown event center. Saturday, this Saturday, December 9th from noon to 5 p.m. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait. With all your farmer's markets favorites. No, I don't know who's going to be there. I I imagine the usual suspects. One would hope. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, you ready to get dragged back to a farmer's market? So if you're not, yeah. (laughs) I'm going to have to dig out my picnic basket. Your picnic basket. Mm, I wonder if I could like cover it in fur to make it more wintry. <laughs> yeah, there we you've go. You've got a muff. I do. I mean, you've got a. Um, what it's, so it it's a. It's called a muff. It is. Okay. Yes. I, Just checking. Yes. <laughs> well, and that sentence does work several ways, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a muff that's also a purse. Yes. So you can keep all your little keepsakes in it. Mm-hmm. And I've even got a matching headband for it. It's very cute. Is it a furry headband? It is. Does it have ears? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> It's made from something that once did have ears, which makes me feel kind of sad, but it really is pretty. (laughs) And you know what? I'm going to say it again. I know I'm a terrible person for wearing it, but my fur coat is the warmest article of clothing I own. You're okay. You're in a red state. That's true. If they saw a furry, (laughs) they'd kill it, skin it, (laughs) eat the meat. uh, (laughs) Yeah. And and put it on a rich lady's back. I'm talking about animals. I'm talking about minks and ermines. (laughs) I mean, really, furries are just fancy ladies just going a little more extreme. Yeah, okay, we've covered furries, but isn't there something called cottage core? <gasps> yes. Is it, so that's like, um, it's not 50s suburban housewife necessarily, but close. Kinda. It's more 
it's more homesteady. It's a lot about like being able to live off the land and like a uh, sort of cozy way. So if there yeah. if there's that core, there's got to be Victorian era uh, lady core, well, right? Well, yes, there is. Is there? <laughs> as a matter of fact, does yeah. it have a name? Do you know? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Vintage core, maybe, or yeah, I. Uh, antique core i'd have to look into that but there is a gal who shows up on my facebook reels feed who's like always dressed in like 1820s apparel i saw uh because apparently watch me get dressed as a thing now yeah. in videos uh and i always skip past them but one that i saw was this woman getting into and it starts with you know the under things already on of course right um, but the under things, listen i'm already <laughs> using 1880s terminology right but yeah she like shows what you know, women, mm-hmm. ladies in the 1880s had to go through. Right. There's like right. five layers there with the, the corset. Yeah, you start and with the, the chemise. The bustle. And the a chemise. It's a chemise. Chamois. Yeah. Chamois. <laughs> you start with the chemise. <laughs> I don't then know. Then you've got the corset. Then you've got the hoop skirt. Then you've got the underlayer. Then you've got the overskirt. Then you've got the overcoat. I just want to know, how do you pee? You know, uh, <laughs> I think that when I see women dressed like that and when I see Spider-Man at right. um, at Disney's California Adventure, <laughs> I think, oh, man, they need help to <laughs> right. do that. Maybe that's why they have the handmaidens. You know, I will say the hoop skirts actually do make that a little easier because okay. then you can sort of like just grab the hoop and you've sort of got control over the entire hem, Okay, which is nice. Bring it up around your neck so you're choking. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily <laughs> that. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a really intimate secret. Okay. Okay, so uh, I worked in the bridal industry for quite a while, mm-hmm. and at more than one event, I ended up wearing a very big, very poofy formal dress that was difficult to get in and out of. There was no getting out of it once you were in it until the end of the night. So if you had to go potty, you had to find really um, creative ways to do so. And my best friend <laughs> worked with me there, and she found the perfect way. Okay. Do you want to know what you do? What? You lift up the front. This is information I will never use, but maybe someone will. (laughs) All right. Well, all of our lady listeners will at some point, at least on their wedding day. You lift up the front? You lift up the front. Then you straddle the toilet backwards. Okay. So you're facing the tank because that way you don't have to worry about accidentally dipping because you're like that way you have... All of the front in one arm, mm-hmm. leaving the other to take care of other things, uh-huh. you know. To grab the, the the square to spare. Exactly. And then <laughs> the back can just lay as it needs to because mm-hmm. it's not touching the toilet. Oh, man, that's funny. Right. Because <laughs> you, you just kind of perch right on the edge. Women go through so much. Oh, they look pretty. The and no one appreciates fashion. it. Yeah. No one appreciates it. <laughs> I mean, I do have to laugh. I, I think everybody's seen the, is it Kathy? I remember like a Kathy-esque two-panel comic where she's standing in front of the mirror in her romper saying, oh my goodness, I love my romper. Don't I look cute today? Uh-huh. And then the next frame, she's in the stall. <laughs> and just right. it's just a sort of humiliating position because you got to <laughs> yeah. take it all off and it's down around your ankles. Yeah, rompers are not fun. So every time I see a woman in a romper, I think, oh, I'm sorry. Because I look, man, I hydrate so much that I'm going every hour mm-hmm. on the hour. Oh yeah, same with jumpsuits too. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, what, am I using? Am I trying to say? Oh yeah, no, they're the romper same. Romper is like a short and a tank, exactly one piece, and then yeah. a jumpsuit is full body one piece, exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, like what I wore as Batgirl, that's a jumpsuit. Yeah, how did you pee? Uh, I had to take the whole thing <laughs> off. Yeah, I just made sure that I went before I left the house. I don't need bladder of solid steel. I think. <laughs> yeah. How did we get to bladder of solid steel from? Oh, formals, uh, cottage core muffs, muffs. Yeah, yeah. From the Idaho Falls Farmers Market Winter Market. Yes, because I was talking about making my basket more wintry. <laughs> anyway, it's their first annual. Santa's going to be there, and a few other surprises. <laughs> I love that. At the deck, Saturday, December 9th, noon to five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I know I am and already had their Light of Palooza light parade in, at McCowan Park. Mm-hmm. The big lighting there, December 2nd, this past weekend. And Idaho Falls is going to have something similar. The Great Snake River Greenbelt Holiday Light Parade. <gasps> sponsored by the Rotary Club of Idaho Falls, December oh, 22nd. That sounds fun. So I know Christmas is a Monday, December 25th. 
So we'll have an all Christmas episode that day. And New Year's will be the following Monday. So the 22nd, let me oh, do goodness. the reverse math. Don't help me. Uh, the 24th will be Sunday. Through. So this will be Friday. Cool. And speaking of Christmassy things. Ah, uh, yes. Twas, as in twas the night before Christmas. This is a thing that I'm in this year. I'm very excited about it. I did it in 2020. We were all wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And your buddy uh, Don actually put it on the air on mm -hmm. 96.1 and 102 on The Wolf. Oh, Don's just the best. So this is a variety show in the style of a 1940s radio show. Oh, funny. So you can kind of see what it was like behind the scenes. There's a Foley artist and everything. Whoa. We, we have our own like singers and stuff. Oh, cute. The Buffalo Gals. Everything's a reference to Christmas classics. I love that. Right. And, um, and it's not on the radio. It's live in person. Now, this is a free event, but donations are welcome for the Trinity United Methodist Community Outreach Program. It is at Trinity United. If you're wondering, what church is that? That's the one right behind or right next to the Museum of Idaho. They have a really cool pipe organ. A really organ beautiful inside. one. It's a beautiful church. Yeah. They've beautiful. got a pipe organ? They do. Wait Ugh. till you see it. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> and maybe even hear it. It's happening this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with a matinee on Saturday. Okay, so December 7th, 8th, and 9th at 7 p.m., matinee on Saturday, December 9th. I think it's at 2. There's a couple of long radio drama segments and i'm in one of, so i'm in both doing different voices but the one that i'm particularly excited for i play eb scrooge pi in the style of you know a 1940s film noir picture say i love that. now i can't say nobody actually talks like that but instead of a christmas carol it's called a christmas peril where Ebenezer okay, Scrooge so <laughs> yeah, is a PI and he's trying to solve the mystery of his partner Jake Marley's murder. And it Whoa. gets, yeah, it gets, uh, there's twists and turns and. Oh, I love it. I can't wait. And then the other one is a uh, Christmas heist where some bad guys, including Santa, uh, are trying to rob <laughs> the uh, Gimbel's store in New York City. Well, you know, he had elves going on strike that year, like on Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. he he needed some help. He needed some some backup. It's an old timey <laughs> family fun event. It really is. I think you'll love it. Again, uh, did I say free? December seventh, <laughs> eighth, and ninth with a matinee on the ninth. And you can Google or Facebook search the Snake River Radio Players for more information. What a bunch of talented people. That sounds so fun. It's going to be great. You're invited. This Consider this your invite. We hope to see you there. So what you're saying really is that you could hit up this winter's farmers, the winter farmer's market first and then sneak in all your, you know, little cheeses and breads as you watch the, <laughs> as you watch the show. I don't think food is allowed in the sanctuary other than communion wafers. That's why I said sneak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I might have some cheese in my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to pat me down now. <laughs> they are. They're going yeah. to. I'll, pat me down I'll, to <laughs> I'll tell them. Yeah. You're going to. You got a frisker. You're going to snitch on me? You, you search your mouth, Wise too, guy. <laughs> because it... <laughs> now, look here, see? <laughs> Twice now this episode, you've made me laugh so hard I cough, and that is rude. It can happen. How dare you? I was going to say, stop. so man wearing cheese is right in between the deck and Trinity United Methodist. Give myself a little gelato and some grilled cheese. Stop by for, yeah, yeah. grilled cheese, tomato soup, raw milk, and some gelato. Ooh, you know what I could do? I could get a grilled cheese and put it in my muff so that it keeps my hands nice and warm. <laughs> and then I'll just sneak my hand out. Like, anytime I gasp, like, I'll just, I'll gasp a lot during You'll the You look play. like a furry doing it. <laughs> right? No, I'll just gasp a lot during the play and I'll go, <laughs> 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 and eat some, of my, <laughs> eat some of my grilled cheese. If you're just joining us, that's not as bad as it sounds. <laughs> what we just said, okay. A lot of visual jokes in this one. Sorry, audio-only yeah. listeners. Well, and also, I hate that there's no other word for a muff. I guess a hand warmer. No, it's, it's, it is a muff. Yeah. That's the name of it. Yeah. Oh, geez. We've had such a good time. We're coming to the end of our show. Mm -hmm. It looks like we're out of time for the jail story. More buff, more muff. It wasn't intentional. I Muff! <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have listened to previous episodes to know what the hell we're talking about right, right. now. Right. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't intentional. 
I did promise you if it wasn't this week, it'll be next. So I promise it'll be next week. Again, a lame story. What we want to leave you with this time around is guess who's back? Back again. Okay. It's Cookie Monster 208. Yes. You remember we played uh, 90 seconds of a song or so, Idaho, and just a, a cool video. I think a cool dude. You see the big Idaho tat. Right. So you remember my Mr. 208 hat. Yes. From our 13 local places to shop gift guide. Right. And I, you know, I like to support my bros. Yeah. So when I got the hat from him, we talked for a minute. He said he'd have this new song, Idaho Love, that we'll play a little bit for you in just a minute coming up. And then we just kind of got to talking. I was going to buy him lunch, but he couldn't stay for lunch because he had to go visit his grandma and he was taking her soup and Aww. Robitussin or whatever. Oh, that's sweet. Isn't that sweet? And that I'm like, is sweet. Man, well, you know, you do everything. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm, and I'm, I'm not sure what re- what happened with his dad or stepdad, but basically um, became incapacitated when he was like 10 years old. So he was the man of the house Oh, since he was like 10. Just a good guy with a good heart. What a sweetheart. And a piece of good news for him. Mm-hmm. I guess Afro Man or Afro Man's rep uh-huh. called him and said, we want to collab. That is so cool. And I'm like, wait a minute. Of all people, <laughs> why you may remember Afro Man from his 2000 hit single, Because I Got High. Yeah. Where he lists a bunch of stuff he was supposed to do, but then he got high. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and side note, a couple days later, we definitely know our phones are listening to us, right? Because I got served a 30-minute documentary on Afro Man. And in it, he says, you know, people always give me a hard time for being a one-hit wonder, but how many hits do you need? One, baby! <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, how many hits do you have? Right, huh? There we go. How many hits do you have? Yeah. Well, I guess Afro Man in 2008 had, was it a song or an album called, I think just a song called Idaho. Mm-hmm where he talked about different cities in Idaho. Oh, cool. And I mean, like, they're extremely, if you go listen to it and say, Mike, how could you? (laughs) They're extremely, I warn you in advance, misogynistic lyrics, where he talks about things women did to him and things he did to women in Idaho. Typically rhyming names of towns in Idaho (laughs) with the act. Okay. Or the parts. Yeah. For example... Idaho Falls and Twin Falls. Okay. I won't tell you what he rhymes with that. It's balls. <laughs> Both times. <laughs> and I think he rhymes like Sandpoint with Smoke a Joint <laughs> and Rexburg with Smoke the Herb or something like that. Which Just, is one thing you cannot do there. <laughs> right? You can't do in the entire state of Idaho. Well, yeah. But especially there. But uh, one of the lines in his 2008 song is, potatoes ain't the only thing they grow. And that's what Josh, Joshua Worrell, Mr. 208, Cookie Monster 208, Uh sort of calls back to, you know, references, pays homage to in his song, Uh Idaho, that we played last time. Okay, that's cool. So he's got a new song out. We want to play some of it for you. I love it. I think it's sort of hauntingly hooky. Yeah. Well, and you know, Mike, Idaho loved too if she'd just let me. (laughs) Dad joke number two tonight. (laughs) That's how Yoda would say it. Yeah, it is. Idaho love. Here it is, Cookie Monster 208, Idaho love. If you like this song, make sure you put Cookie Monster 208 in your algorithm. I know he's on Facebook and YouTube, maybe Instagram, and of course Spotify. Give him some love. Some Idaho love. (laughs) I was hoping you'd say that, because if you didn't, I was going (laughs) to. She got me high. She falling in love Every day you sleep, but tonight you kill and I'm about to put it all on you way. Should I risk it? But a biscuit, eggs, and potatoes, teeth that are twisted, spirits are lifted. Should I let it go? Oh no, to forget it, it is hate that I missed it. You just tried to get me high off life. life. Take me staring cause your eyes so bright. Right. Love is blinding, my mind is rewinding. I'm finding there ain't never been a time so right. Can't taste my lips, what you do for me? Like a big fish, you doing me? See, I already know about the birds and the bees. You know your love got me buzzing, that's a kill for me. She got me high as a dove. I'm always flying above. I took a fish with me. Now she falling in love. Falling in love. Out of her love. Out of her love. 
She got me high as a dog on my side And I thought of her too good for shit with me Now she's falling in love